I'm really in awe right now because a few weeks ago I had prayed and asked God to help me to understand how does this land that people are calling Israel in the Middle East, how does that play into end times prophecy? How, how are we supposed to understand this? Because this is big. It has to be in prophecy, especially because counterfeit Christianity is supporting it and there's a whole narrative around it. And I really just wanted to understand. And also, especially because God has been raising this, he actually was already raising attention to this even before October 7th within the body. And in fact, he had me writing about certain things in A Soul Aligned years ago. Topics that I would never have brought up on my own, but he had me writing about them years ago. So I know that this fits into biblical prophecy. And about a week, I think it's been about a week now, he um, had been putting on me, he wanted me to study about the false prophet. And there's actually a section of scripture that does not even actually use the language of the false prophet. And it's in Revelation 13. It doesn't even use that language, but we know that it's the false prophet. So that was pretty interesting because normally when I do a study, I would be looking up that language, but I know Revelation very well. And so I knew that, that Revelation 13 talked about the false prophet. And in fact, it talks about the prophet, the false prophet more than any other chapter of the Bible or of Revelation, really, because that's where it's at, without even referring to that title. So he had me studying that. And the other thing that he wanted me to study, oh my goodness, I went into my list of videos <laughs> that I was doing at that time, just so that I could understand what was the other thing that, or remember, what was the other thing he had me studying? I'll remember it, but I can't remember it right now. But it, it went along with this. In any event, he was weaving a picture together, and this is what he wanted me to study. Well, I had no idea what I was going to come across. I had no idea that he was going to reveal, as I was studying Revelation 13, that the false prophet actually sets up an image, and it's that image in Revelation 13 that is actually doing the work that we've been saying the Antichrist is going to do all along. Now, listen, the Antichrist is a kingdom— and that kingdom is behind everything. That kingdom is performing all of this. It's the kingdom of Satan. You're either from God's kingdom or you're from the kingdom of Satan. There's no middle ground. But in Revelation 13, it talks about that image that is set up by the false prophet of the United States. You hear that? Set up by the false prophet of the United States. Meaning the false prophet is the one who has created this Frankenstein and is testifying to it. And what is it an image of? It's an image of the Antichrist. It's an, the image of counterfeit Christianity. Now listen, Israel, Paul, Paul tells us in the New Testament that not all who are descended from Israel are Israel. Do you descend from a land or do you descend from a person? Because he says not all who are descended from Israel are Israel. You don't descend from land, guys. You descend from a person. There were Israelites before there was ever a land of Israel. And even when the word refers to the land of Israel, they're referring to the land that belongs to his people, Israel. Now, who was Israel? Jacob. Jacob's name was changed to Israel because he wrestled with God. So there was Israel, Jacob. Then there were his descendants who became the Israelites, and they didn't have a land. They were living in Egypt in slavery, in bondage. And God promised him that he was going to bring them into a land flowing with milk and honey. And he did. And guess what? That land wasn't called Israel. They were still Israel. Still his people. Still doesn't mean land. And before he even brought the Israelites into that land, he told Moses, they're going to soon prostitute themselves and I'm going to drive them from this land. And then Moses taught the Israelites a song in the book of Joshua in prophecy of the fact that they were going to prostitute themselves to the gods, the, to foreign gods, and that God was going to drive them from the land. And that's exactly what happened. He drew, drove them from the land. And it is understood, it is understood in scripture that the kingdom and, the, and land will not be restored to Israel, to the people, until the Messiah comes. And it's also understood that Israel is God, are God's people, and that not all who are descended from Israel are Israel. Otherwise, that makes Gentiles chop liver, doesn't it? That means Jesus has not extended salvation to the Gentiles. There's no favoritism, guys. You want to be a descendant of Abraham, you got to do what Abraham did. 
you want to be considered a Jew, you need to be circumcised in heart because that's how the word defines a Jew. Not through ethnicity, not through descent, not through physical circumcision, but through circumcision of the heart. America created this image, this counterfeit Israel. They created it. They elevated Netanyahu. They created that Frankenstein. And now that Frankenstein has become far too big for his britches. And he's out of control. But America is going to continue to testify to that counterfeit image of the Antichrist, of Israel, of counterfeit Israel. That is not Israel. That is not the Israel that God talked about. They, do, they are not religious. They do not care about God. If they did, they wouldn't be murdering because, you know, the word says not to murder. And you can't say, oh, well, they don't have the New Testament because that's in the Old Testament. The New Testament, counterfeit Christianity, these counterfeit Christian Zionists should understand that not only are you not to murder, but you are to pray for your enemies. You're to give to those who ask of you. If someone tries to sue you, you're to give them your cloak too. They don't believe in the word. They don't believe in Jesus and the things that he taught. They couldn't possibly because they don't obey. And those who are his obey his teachings and they do the will of the father. Otherwise, he doesn't know you. I want you to listen to what has been prophesied. Revelation 2, verse 9. I know your afflictions and your poverty, yet you are rich. I know about the slander of those who say they are Jews and are not, but are a synagogue of Satan. Oh, so in the, in the time of the end, there are people who are going to claim to be circumcised in heart, who are going to claim to be Jews, who are going to claim to belong to Christ, and yet they are not, but are actually defined as a synagogue of Satan. Interesting. Revelation 3. Verse 9, I will make those who are of the synagogue of Satan who claim to be Jews, though they are not, but are liars. I will make them come and fall down at your feet and acknowledge that I have loved you. Why is he doing that? Because they've been saying that they're the chosen ones, that they're the ones who belong to him. They've been saying that God's people are liars. They've been persecuting God's people. They have killed God's people. And now this is vindication, sweet, sweet vindication. Matthew 7, verse 22, many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, didn't we prophesy in your name and in your name drive out demons and in your name perform many miracles? Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew, I never knew you away from me, you evildoers. So these are people who think that they're in him. They think that they are Jews. They think that they are Christians. The only reason I'm separating those, by the way, because true Judaism or, or yes, true Judaism understood that the Messiah was coming, they accepted the Messiah and they became Christian. Christian is the fulfillment of Judaism. There is no Judaism after that. But there are those who are claiming to be Jews and there are those claiming to be Christian right now. And neither of them know God at all. And we understand from what Jesus is saying, from what he said in Revelation 2, 3, and Matthew 7, we understand that in the end, there are going to be many, many counterfeits who are going to think that they belong to him who have been deluding themselves in this great deception because they have not loved truth, because they have rejected truth, they have rejected knowledge, so he rejects them as his priests. Not only that, but they perish because of lack of knowledge, not because it wasn't accessible to them, because they didn't love it. They did not love truth. Revelation 13, verse 11 then I saw a second beast. The second beast is a false prophet. The first beast is the Antichrist. I'm not going to read about the Antichrist because I really want to hone in on the false prophet and the image. Then I saw a second beast coming out of the earth. It had two horns like a lamb, but it spoke like a dragon. All right. It looks like a lamb, but it speaks like a dragon. It has a message of a dragon. It exercised all the authority of the first beast. First beast is the Antichrist. That's counterfeit Christianity. So it exercised all the authority of the first beast on its behalf and made the earth and its inhabitants worship the first beast whose fatal wound had been healed. So it's making you worship that first beast. But listen to what the false prophet also does. And it performed great signs, even causing fire to come down from heaven to earth, to the earth in full view of people. Fire to come down from, the, from heaven to the earth in full view of people. Now that can be war, and it can also be judgment. It can be both, by the way. Fire is judgment, and we see that war is being used as a form of judgment to punish those who do not worship the image, okay? 
That's what's going on. That's what's going on in Palestine. That's what's also going on here. It's beginning to start here in the United States where people are being punished, where judgment is being put on them because they dare to peacefully protest. I'm not talking about the idiots. I find it to be very ironic that there's such a mimicry going on of what we saw one and two years ago with the woke crowd in which they were saying things that were completely nuts. Absolutely, it was nuts. And then if anyone spoke against it, they would say, you want me to unalive myself. You don't acknowledge that I exist. But they were doing that without any understanding. The people who are doing what they're doing right now are doing it supposedly in the name of God. They're claiming to know him. And when Jesus was here, he said, I came to make the blind see and those who claim to see blind. And the Pharisees knew that they were talking about them, that he was talking about them. And they said, surely you don't mean us. And he said, if you didn't claim to see, you wouldn't be guilty. But because you claim to see, you're guilty. He didn't say they could see. He said, you claim to see. So I find it ironic that the very things that this group of people were, were, were saying about woke people, that they were being so ridiculous to say, oh, you want me to unalive myself. Well, what, what is their, what, what do they say? You're anti-Semitic. You're calling for the annihilation of Jews. No, we're not. We just disagree with what you're doing. That's a thing. Like, like you can disagree with someone without being a bigot. And it used to be that, you, that we had, you know, rights that protected our speech. But not anymore, guys. Not to, since the Anti-Semitism Awareness Act went into effect. Your free speech is being taken away. And it will continue to be taken away. And so the reason I brought that up, in part, is because these vigilante groups are going to rise up, okay? With, during that time, it was Antifa. And there are stupid people who are going to do things that they shouldn't be doing. But for the most part... There have been peaceful protests and conversations and dialogues and and people are, in fact, recording their peaceful protests in the way that, ways that they're being treated. The very same types of things are going on right now. They've just been flipped. And I think that this is completely brilliant because what God is doing is he's exposing the hypocrisy of those who claim to be serving in his name. It was so clear to them a year or two ago. When they were saying, when, when others were saying the exact same things they're saying right now, it was so clear to them a year or two ago, God is exposing this incredible hypocrisy of these evildoers. All right. So the second beast has horns like a lamb. It looks like a lamb, speaks like a dragon, exercises all the authority of the first beast on its behalf, makes the earth and its inhabitants worship the first beast whose fatal wound had been healed. Um, you know, we talked about this this evening during Bible study. One of the things we talked about is the Statue of Liberty or the goddess Libertas, the Roman goddess Libertas, you know, with that spiky crown around her head, that symbol of freedom in ancient Rome, holding the torch of enlightenment. Oh, so wise, so wise. This is what we hold up, right? It lights the way to freedom and the path of liberty. I don't think so. I don't think that false god is going to light you to the path of anything. That's what represents our country, guys. That's, that's, I mean, have we ever thought about this before? How idolatrous that is? Or how about the tablet she's carrying? I'm just pulling this from Google. The Statue of Liberty is a female allegorical figure of the Roman goddess Libertas. She holds a torch above her head and her left arm carries a tablet inscribed July 4th, 1776, lies at her feet in Roman numerals, and she is considered an icon of freedom and of the United States and a welcoming site to immigrants arriving from abroad. We're not supposed to be doing this. This is not the representation of a Christian nation. That's a representation of a very confused nation, an incredibly confused nation. How do you call yourself Christian? And this is what you got going on. This is an image of Rome. And what about the cross? Image of papal Rome, image of the Antichrist, of counterfeit Christianity. That We were never supposed to set up an image. That is the image of the god Tammuz, the sun god. And it was set up by Constantine the fake. Was Constantine a Christian? No, he was a fake. And now you got Christian nationalists campaigning for the Antichrist. We want a combination of church and state. Um, do you read your Bible? Because you're going to get it in fulfillment of what God has said, but... That, I mean, hello, that the Antichrist is a combination of church and state. Hello, God never told you to do this. He never told you to want human kings. He rebuked us 
for wanting human kings? Has the United States testified to this Antichrist? Has the United States required you to worship this Antichrist? Because there was a time when the United States was actually very anti-Catholic because of the persecutions of Catholicism. And then Protestants, the prostitutes that bore out of her, not Christians. Those are not Christians. They then started persecuting Catholics, you know, because this is a divided kingdom. And they've been at war for a long, long time. And as we read Daniel 11, this is describing that war. It's describing that divided kingdom, the king of the north and the king of the south. That is describing papal Rome and the prostitutes that bore out of her. And their long history of battle. Now listen to who else the false prophet of the United States sets up. Because there's a third player here. There's the Antichrist, the false prophet, and then there's the image of the Antichrist, which is actually not a statue. This image is actually doing things. This image actually has life and great power. Revelation 13, 14. Because of the signs it was given power to, be for, to perform on behalf of the first beast, it deceived the inhabitants of the earth. It ordered them to set up an image in honor of the beast who was wounded by the sword and yet lived. Okay, so it, it required them, it ordered them to set up an image in honor of the Antichrist. Counterfeit Christianity. And now the image is counterfeit Israel. Because Israel is Christianity. And so calling this thing that got fabricated in 1948, that is not Israel. Calling that Israel is an image. It's setting up an image of false Christianity of false religion. So the false prophet orders them to set up an image of in honor of the beast who was wounded by the sword and yet lived. False religion. The second beast was given power to give breath to that image of the first beast. Counterfeit Israel. So that the image counterfeit Israel could speak and cause all who refuse to worship the image to be killed. Who's got the power here? Who's wielding power, guys? So you tell me, I told you the Antichrist is going to rise next year. Are we there yet? Or is this still far off? All the pieces are in place, guys. The second beast was given power to give breath to the image, life to the image. Counterfeit Israel of the first beast. So that the image could speak and cause all who refuse to worship the image to be killed. All who refuse to worship counterfeit Israel to be killed. It also forced all people, great and small, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hands or on their foreheads so that they could not buy or sell unless they had the mark, which is the name of the beast or the number of its name. Now, you need to understand this much about the mark of the beast. Jesus said it's not what goes into a person from the outside that defiles them. It's what's coming out of a person because it's coming from their heart. The mark of the beast is in or on, depending on the translation, your right hand and your forehead. Your right hand represents your deeds. Your forehead represents your thoughts and your beliefs. And so your deeds are your behaviors. What comes out of your mouth is a behavior. And it's usually incongruence, needs to be incongruence with what it is that you think and believe. Because if it's not incongruence, then we know that what you're doing is giving lip service. The way you behave, the way you speak, the way you think, and what you believe is coming from your heart. If you believe in this incredible deception, in this counterfeit Christian, counterfeit Jewish narrative that Israel is some land in the Middle East, if you believe in all the ways that wickedness deceives those who are perishing, Easter, Christmas, image of the cross, counterfeit tithing, tithing was fulfilled in sacrifice, counterfeit Sabbath, Saturday and Sunday, not in the Bible, those are Roman days, pre-tribulation rapture, any number of these false, crazy doctrines that do not exist in the Bible, you believe in that, that's where your heart is. That's what's going to come out of your right hand and your forehead. On the other hand, there are people like me. There are actually pagans, guys, pagans who understand better than God's people or those claiming to be God's people what is right. Out there putting their lives on the line in order to say that what's going on here is wrong. This is not okay what's going on in Palestine. This is not okay. And pagans 
are saying it. Do you know what the book of John says? What Jesus said to his apostles when he came back? The very people who kill you are going to be claiming, are going to claim to be doing a service to God. And he wasn't just talking to the apostles. He said that for our sake. So you need to understand that all those who do not receive this mark of the beast are going to be killed. They're going to be martyred. At this point in history, the word has made that so clear. I don't know how anyone gets pre-tribulation rapture. But if you don't know that, how are you ever going to be ready? If you don't know that and you think you're already saved and you don't understand that you're working out a covenant, that you're working out your salvation, you know what's going to happen? You're just going to sit here like a lump on a log, getting bored, and, and so you're going to start distracting yourself with worldly things, not realizing that you have some stuff you need to be doing. You need to be purified, made spotless, and refined because you're going to be martyred if your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Now, I want you to make sure that you understand something, that it, the image of the Antichrist, counterfeit Israel, it forced all people, great and small, rich, poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hands or on their foreheads so that they could not buy or sell unless they had the mark, which is the name of the beast or the number of its name. That the second beast gives power to this image and causes all who refuse to worship the image to be killed. We're not there yet. We'll be there next year. You understand? You understand how rapidly God has done this? Have you, or do you have the eyes to see, guys? Because you need to be able to see this. You need to be able to understand that this is at the door. It is time. And no one is going to repent after that Antichrist rises. Now is the time for you to return and discern if what I'm saying is true. You should be able to see this. My goodness. If you cannot see this, it is because you're not returning to God. Now, this evening we were studying Daniel 11 because Nikki Haley wrote today about a shell during a visit to an artillery post on the northern border. She's seen writing on a shell, writing on a bomb shell, finish them. What kind of Christian or human says something like this, knowing that there are babies, innocent babies being burned and blown up and starving to death? What kind of monster says something like that? finish them and then thinks that's Christian. Are, are you guys reading the same Bible I'm reading? This is lunacy. And not only is it lunacy because lunacy I could deal with because maybe that person doesn't know any better. This is demonic lunacy in people claiming to know Christ. It is sick. This is the light of the world. That is not light that this person is shining. That is darkness. She said, the time has come to change the equation. The residents of Tyre and Sidon will evacuate. The resident, residents of the north will return. What is she talking about? Okay. Tyre and Sidon were destroyed in the Bible. Okay. <laughs> For wickedness. Like, like God let them get real great and powerful and then he destroyed them. And modern day Tyre and Sidon are in Lebanon. So that does not make sense doesn't make sense in terms of what we're seeing right now. What does that have to do with the price of tea in China? But she's stating it as though it's a prophecy. Let me read it again. The time has come, okay? The time has come to change the equation. The residents of Tyre and Sidon, she's prophesying, will evacuate and the residents of the north will return. It kind of reminds me of this. Acts 16, verse 16. Once when we were going to the place of prayer, we were met by a female slave who had a spirit by which she predicted the future. She earned a great deal of money for her owners by fortune telling. She followed Paul and the rest of us shouting, these men are servants of the most high who are telling you the way to be saved. She kept this up for many days. Finally, Paul became so annoyed that he turned around and said to the spirit in the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to come out of her. At that moment, the spirit left her. Was she wrong? No, she wasn't wrong. She was actually correct. She was speaking something correct. Now, I'm not telling you to go listen to false prophets. I'm not telling you to listen to Nikki Haley, that's for sure. But there are times when these people are speaking almost in a compulsive way, like that spirit is compelling them to speak something. An example of that is, uh, you know, remember when Jesus drove out legion, the legions of spirits from the man at the cave, and those spirits were saying, 
don't drive us into the abyss, right? Like something like that. Son of God, you're the son of God. And so there are examples of this in which those who are possessed by demonic spirits are being compelled by that demonic spirit to speak something. And that's what this reminds me of. She could have no idea what the heck she's talking about because at face value, what she's saying does not make sense. It really just doesn't. It's Tyre and Sidon were already destroyed. Modern day Tyre and Sidon are Lebanon. They have nothing to do with what's going on in Palestine. I mean, this is like, what it's almost like Kamala Harris and her word salads. But here's what I want you to understand. And this is outlined in Daniel 11. I'm not going to read the whole chapter. But in Daniel 11, you see the back and forth battle between papal Rome, which began the Antichrist of counterfeit Christianity and counterfeit Judaism, quite frankly, because counterfeit Judaism has prostituted itself to papal Rome has prostituted God's calendar, the so-called Hebrew calendar that they're talking about. They changed that calendar and they added another calendar to it and they prostituted it to the Gregorian calendar so that it would match up a little better. Saturday Sabbath, I mean, come on, guys. Head coverings, I mean, I don't know why they're wearing yarmulkes because it doesn't say anything in the word about them needing to wear a yarmulke or any kind of head covering. They're the head, right? Like in, in the New Testament, we're supposed to understand that they are the head of Christ. They don't cover their head. So papal Rome, the king of the north, always at odds with the prostitutes that bore out of her, king of the south, always fighting against each other. And then they come together and they lie to each other. As it's written in Daniel 11, the two kings sit at the table and lie to one another. They make agreements with each other. And this just goes on and on and on. And they have no intention, no loyalty, no intention of fulfilling anything. These are businesses, by the way. You know, just because you're hearing the king of the north and the king of the south, I don't want you to picture two men. What you need to understand is that these are kingdoms. This is, well, in in its entirety, it is a kingdom, the king of the north and the king of the south. But it's a split kingdom, the king of the north representing papal Rome, the king of the south representing the prostitutes that bore out of her. They're always fighting with their harlot mother. And the thing you need to understand about this is that they are all businesses. they've, They've all made themselves marketplaces claiming to serve God. But God says you can't serve both God and money. These are businesses, guys. Marketplaces. What did Jesus flip the tables over? Why did he do that? Why was he so upset about that? Not an isolated event. He was demonstrating something. You cannot make a marketplace of God. So when these people come together, it's not because they're working for the kingdom of God. It's not like, oh, let's come together and that way we can, you know, serve God. That's not what they're doing. It's you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. So there's either money to be made, glory to be had, Or, as we're seeing today, they think that the left is their external enemy, and so they join forces in order to fight this external enemy. They think that the battle is external to them. They don't understand the concept of being circumcised from the sinful flesh. That's your enemy. That's where the enemy is going to get you. This isn't about going to war, physical war against human beings or even spirits. And also, by the way, who sends spirits? Who sends curses? Any, any, any example in scripture of Satan sending a curse or a spirit? Not one. Not one. God sends these things in his sovereignty. So now let me explain to you her statement because I believe this is coming from, this, this is demonic. This is a demonic prophecy. And Satan knows he's like a rabid dog just waiting to get to the flesh of God's people. He knows something. He's not all-knowing. Now, let me explain to you what's going to happen. The king of the south, the prostitutes that bore out of Catholicism, they've been in power for a while. And papal Rome, their mother, Babylon the Great, she's had her tail between her legs. And it's not that she doesn't have any power, but she's not reigning. She's been waiting to rise again. In Revelation 17, it says she was, now is not, but will rise again to go to perdition. There shouldn't be any question, any confusion as to who the Antichrist is. It is the kingdom started by papal Rome. It is the kingdom of the Antichrist. The Antichrist is Satan. He's the man of sin. He's the man of lawlessness. The the Antichrist is not going to be a human man. He is the Antichrist. Many Antichrists, plural, have, have come. And the Antichrist of the end times is a kingdom. It's described that way in Daniel 2, 7, 11 and Revelation uh, 13 and 17. 
the Catholic Church commissioned a Catholic theologian named Rivera to rewrite doctrine regarding the Antichrist to say that it was going to be a man. And the reason they did this is because they'd been receiving a lot of heat from Protestants and they'd been saying, that's the Antichrist. And it only took, I don't know, you know, hundreds of years for us to get to this point where everyone just gobbles up every stupid doctrine that the Catholic Church commissions someone to go and spread. Why, why would they even get away with that? The reason they get away with it is because Christians, so-called Christians, are not reading their Bible. And because so-called Christians set up pastors and false teachers and false prophets to tell them what the Word and the Spirit are supposed to minister to them. It's lazy. It's unaccountable. And what does the Word say? You're deceived when you have not loved truth. You have it accessible to you. All you got to do is return to God and he'll return to you. Then you'll have a spirit. All you got to do is open up that Bible and stay in step with him and ask him to minister to minister it to you. But people are lazy. And so this is the reason why they believe in all of these false doctrines. So for many years, what Daniel outlines, what Daniel 11 outlines is that for many years, there's this battle going on between the king of the north and the king of the south, papal Rome and the prostitutes that bore out of her. Battle going on. Finally, the king of the north is taken down by Napoleon, atheistic communism. And for a little while, Protestantism or prostituteism <laughs> begins to sort of reign in a way. I want to be careful about that language because that's not what the word says, but they kind of take over. They take over her role. Let's put it that way. And she plays them like a fiddle. All she has to do is keep dropping this false doctrine in and they suck it up and they go spread it. And there's a place here in Daniel 11 that talks about her carrying off the plunder from this king of the north, carrying off their false gods and their silver and gold, even imposing a tax, that thing they call tithing that was fulfilled in sacrifice. But is it not true that they carried off her gods? What are those gods, guys? Easter, Ishtar, Christmas, Mithras, the cross to Tammuz. Many, many false gods. Many false gods. Images, pictures of, of so-called Jesus. Movies of so-called Jesus. Statues and nativities of so-called Jesus. And then they bow down and they kiss those little statues made of ceramic. Can't see, can't talk, can't hear. But you know what? That's how counterfeit Christianity likes their God. They like to be able to put their gods in a box. That way, their God doesn't hold them accountable, right? They don't have to submit to it. And so it says here that they seize their gods, their metal images and their valuable articles of silver and gold and carry them off to Egypt. That's a fantastic way of demonstrating the wickedness of counterfeit Christianity. And then it says, for some years, he will leave the king of the north alone. So they're not, for some years, they're not persecuting the Catholic Church. And now you see that they're going to be coming back together. That the Pope has been saying the same thing Nikki Haley's saying. It's time for reconciliation. It's time for the equation to change. They're saying the same thing, okay? The Pope is saying it's time for reconciliation. And I want you to think about any abuser that you have known or heard about. This is what an abuser does. They reel you in under false pretenses. Here, let's be reconciled. Oh, I'm so sorry. The remorse I feel, oh, it's just killing me. Let's be reconciled. Why the heck would you want to be reconciled with your abuser? And so they sucker you in, and then they rip the rug from under you. And that's exactly what is being done right now. Reconciliation? Really? Why? Why would you need to do that? But see, God is conforming the situation, the circumstances in order that these marketplaces, these businesses that call themselves churches, oh, they're going to come together. And they're going to think that they're fighting evil. They're fighting the left, right? Because republicanism is so Christian. So they will reconcile, actually, for a period of time in order to hand over their power to that Antichrist. Don't think for a second that papal Rome is not going to turn on her daughters like she has so many times before. They're going to turn on her, too. They're going to burn her with fire. Burn her flesh with fire, strip her naked. We've already heard about that in the word in Revelation. So Nikki Haley says the time has come to change the equation. The residents of Tyre and Sidon will evacuate. Let me tell you how I hear that. And the, and the residents of the north will return. Well, the north is the Antichrist. Excuse me. The, the north and the south are the Antichrist. The north is papal Rome. So it is time for papal Rome to rise in power again. That is true. Now, Tyre and Sidon 
were given, they were given power for a certain amount of time until they went to destruction, aren't they? weren't they? So the way that I hear this, the way that I hear what she's saying is that Tyre and Sidon are representing the king of the south. And it is time for the equation to change. It is time for that kingdom to be consolidated and for them to give power to papal Rome. That's how I hear that. Do I think that Nikki Haley knows what she's talking about? Nope. I do not think that she knows at all what she's talking about. I think that she was compelled to say that by something operating in her. And I am very careful about what I say about saying things like that because I am well aware that blasphemy against the Holy Spirit is the one sin that would, will not be forgiven. But I am telling you right now that the Holy Spirit does not do what Nikki Haley did today. That is not a Christian woman. That is not Christian behavior. This is someone who is claiming to be Christian but is of the synagogue of Satan. Now, I want to show you something in Daniel 11 that was pointed out to me this evening by a gentleman in our Bible study. Daniel 11, verse 36. The king will do as he pleases. He will exalt and magnify himself above every god and say unheard of things about the god of gods against the god of gods. He will be successful until the time of wrath is completed, for what has been determined must take place. He will show no regard for the gods of his ancestors or for the one desired by women, nor will he regard any god, but will exalt himself above them all. Instead of them, he will honor a god of fortresses. Okay. A false god has also gone hand in hand with an image. Have they not? That's what people do. They bow down to that image as though it's a god. We spoke about an image in Revelation 13, didn't we? What's the image? Counterfeit Israel. What is this Antichrist honoring? He is honoring a god of fortresses. What's a fortress, guys? It's a military stronghold. Instead of them, he will honor a god of fortresses, a god unknown to his ancestors. Believe me that they are unknown to their ancestors. And the crazy thing is that they keep acting like they have some ancestral entitlement to land in the Middle East. Instead of them, he will honor a god of fortresses, a god unknown to his ancestors. He will honor with gold and silver and precious stones and costly gifts. He will attack the mightiest fortresses with the help of a foreign god and will greatly honor okay, he, the Antichrist, will, it, excuse me, he, the king of the north, papal Rome, will attack the mightiest fortresses with the help of a foreign god, the image of counterfeit Israel, and will greatly honor those who acknowledge him. He will make them rulers over many people and distribute the land at a price. So what George pointed out to me today he drew my attention to this God of fortresses. Now, one of the things that was kind of getting thrown around today was God of war, like a God of war, but the word doesn't actually say that it's, this is a military stronghold. And I do understand why people are saying God of war. I don't think it's entirely incorrect, but I think we just want to be careful about certain language. And that way we don't lose the fact as well that this is an image of counterfeit Israel. This is an image of the counterfeit of God's church. Like Israel is the name that was given to us as God's people. So what they've tried to do what, and what the devil always tries to do is to covet what God has given to his people and to mimic what he's doing. And that's all good. God is fulfilling what he is doing. He is handing people over to that, that deception that they prefer. And I've been telling you in recent videos that I have literally heard people say, when confronted with the truth, well, I like what the other guy said better. I like their story better. Yeah, I mean, the Bible talked about you. In the last days, people are going to gather around themselves, many teachers who tell them what their itching ears want to hear. Like they'll prefer that narrative over what the actual truth is. I just never thought anyone would be so bold as to actually admit it. It's, it's incredible and still think they're in Christ. Incredible. So this God of fortresses here in verse 38 of Daniel 11 is talking about, is being used interchangeably with the image of counterfeit Israel, the image of the Antichrist in Revelation 13. I just think that's such an important piece of this uh, picture. I also think that it's an important thing that was said by Nikki Haley today. Like I said, I believe it was said in compulsion uh, in, in a, by a spirit that is compelling her. 
The time has come to change the equation. The residents of Tyre and Sidon will evacuate. So it's like, you know, counterfeit Christianity is the entire kingdom of the Antichrist. But it's time for those daughters to evacuate and the residents of the north are going to return. And and you've been seeing this. Come on, guys. You should be seeing it. You should be seeing that Catholicism has rebranded itself as a place for good, as spoken by Mel Gibson himself, another one who is compelled by a spirit to say certain things. I'm not saying that there's truth in him. I'm saying that from time to time, the spirit that occupies these people lets the cat out of the bag, reveals at least what it is that they are doing, what their agenda is. Not very smart. And Mel Gibson literally said that he was part of a movement to rebrand the Catholic Church. Mark Wahlberg is part of that. Jim Caviezel is part of that. The Chosen is part of that. That's Catholic mysticism, okay? There's nothing about that that's Christian. These things are here in order to deceive those who are perishing, who have rejected truth, and whom God rejects as his priests because they've rejected truth. And that equation is being changed. And next year, when the time is right, when God has deemed that the time is right, and the witnesses have completed their testifying, and the reason I know it's next year is because I know when God anointed me to speak what I'm speaking to you. And I know that I will do it for 1,260 days, and I know, therefore, when the devil will be triumphed over, when he will fall from the heavenly realms, go into the shaft, of, have the keys to the shaft of the abyss, go into the abyss, open the abyss, the smoke will rise, he will overpower and kill the witnesses. I know when that's going to happen because I know what I'm doing. I know what my role is. And he will overpower and kill the witnesses and then he will pursue the rest of God's people. If you don't know this in the Bible, ask the questions. Return to God. Ask him if what I'm saying is true. Because if you don't know, if you do not discern this, you'll be carried away in the deception. You will not be ready. I'm so grateful that God is continuing to reveal. And not only that he's continuing to reveal to me, but he was revealing these things. My daughter is the one that pointed this out today with the whole Nikki Haley thing. I mean, it, it God pressed it on her before he even, um, once she started talking about it, then I, I started taking it up with him and asking him to show me. And then we came together and we studied and, and switched things up in Bible study. We were supposed to study Jeremiah, but Tonight, it was like, okay, God's bringing something else up, so we're going to study this. And then George came out with what he, what God was showing him. So it's pretty amazing. It's just really amazing that God is revealing the way that he's revealing. As these things are happening in real time, he's showing us, and that's what the word says. The wise are going to understand, but the wicked will not. There's no reason that you shouldn't understand what's in the word. That's why God gave you the word. It's not meant to be this relentless mystery. But it is meant to be something that you pursue by the Holy Spirit and that you rend your heart to. I mean, you can't, you can't understand it all at once. I mean, there, there are stages that you have to go into because as you're reading certain things like, oh, my goodness, there is no pre-tribulation rapture. Oh, uh, God's people are going to be martyred at the end. It, you have to work your heart into it. And then he'll reveal the next thing. But it's a process of rending your heart. And it's a process of being changed in the process. In, in, in the process, I know that some of the things that I'm talking about here might be very new to you. So I really encourage you to go to God and ask him if what I'm saying is true. Because it's not something that you can understand with your carnality. And it's not something that you can really like decide, oh, okay, well, I think she's saying, I, I think she's speaking the truth. None of us is meant to put anything before God. So you can't put what I'm saying, you can't put me before God or my faith or my, my walk. You got to go to him. You got to go to him and discern every single thing. It's not as though it's not okay to listen to God's servants, but you need to discern whether or not I'm from him. And trust, guys, trust. I think a lot of, a lot of people don't trust that they're going to be able to hear from God that he's going to answer them and let them know what the truth is or or who's speaking truth. But that's not so. And remember that James says that the, like if you ask him for wisdom, you have to believe that he's going to give it to you. Otherwise, you're like a wave tossed in the wind. If you ask for wisdom, that's something that he's pleased to give you, that he wants to give you. 
And so you have to believe that he will. And in that belief, then you continue to pursue him and you keep working it out. This is also what it means to pray in his name. Praying in his name is not in the name of Jesus. It's, that's not praying in his name. Praying in his name is praying in his will. The reason why the apostles were going through the town and they were saying, in the name of Jesus, I'm doing this, is because they were letting the people know in whose name they were doing this. They were letting the people know the Messiah has come and this is, these are the works that testify through which he's testifying. When you start to pray truly in the name of God and rend your heart to what he wants to give you, what is in his goodwill to give you, then you're going to start receiving. But it's not because you said some words. It's because you rent your heart to what he wants. And so now you're not asking him for the same things you wanted when you were once in the world. You know what I mean? Like at some point, the jig is up because screaming in the name of Jesus doesn't work, does it? Please discern the things I've said in this video. Please ask questions. Ask me any question. I will, I will answer your questions with the word of God. I will pray with you and I will trudge with you and I'll be patient with you.